This begins a verse-by-verse study of the book 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. A few things to notice here regarding the deity and the doctrine of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, one, Jesus Christ is God. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And then John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then we read about that uh, Word in John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh. So that's God manifest in the flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. All right. Secondly, not only is Jesus Christ God, but Jesus Christ is our Savior. Uh, in Titus 2 verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we see that God and Jesus Christ are one and the same. Here we see that God and Savior are one and the same. And we see that that one is God the Savior, Jesus Christ. He is that because he is God manifest in the flesh. He has God's blood, uh, Acts 20, uh, 20, 28. He has God's blood and he shed that blood on the cross of Calvary. Uh, if you read Ephesians 2, 12 and 13, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. All right. Uh, thirdly, he is God, he is Savior, and he is also uh, Lord in Luke 6, 46, Jesus Christ is getting at some religious folks here. He says, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things uh, which I say. And then in John chapter 13 and verse 13, Jesus Christ says, ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. So Jesus Christ never shouted down somebody who called him Lord. He might have... Uh, you know, poked at him and, and mocked him and got on him for calling him Lord, but not uh, Savior. Uh, you know, people can make Jesus Christ the Lord of their home or the Lord of their life or the Lord of their, you know, overcoming their addiction or the Lord of their decisions, but never their Savior and Lord. Now, uh, there's coming a day where every knee is going to bow, the atheist uh, and the religious alike the religious but lost or alike, will bow the knee and profess and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's too late to call him Savior, to make him Savior, but they will have to bow the knee and confess that he's Lord. Philippians 2 verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, for the Christian now, we can find ourselves in the uh, book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus Christ is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So it's one thing to call him Lord as the charismatics might do, but it's another thing to make him the Lord, the Savior, and the God of your soul. And when you do, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 again, when you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior, the Bible says, which is our hope. Now you have real hope abiding inside of you. The Bible says about that hope there in Hebrews 6, 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul.
May God bless as you uh, strive to please the Lord in all that you do.